A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I do ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So on today's episode, I discuss all things Barcelona as I have a look at some of the new signings, but focus mainly on the front three. So when you do have a look at Barcelona, then they've had um, a great transfer window. We do know that um, the transfer window is still open. So there could be other players that they could be still looking to add. But so far, they've had such a great transfer window. And um, funny thing is, um, some of the targets that they did get were some of the targets that Chelsea were also um, in line for. But we do know that they have ended up in Barcelona. So when you do have a look at it then, uh, with regards to what Xavi is trying to do. So we have a look at Xavi. He is playing uh, 4-3-3. So it is um, pretty much the classic 4-3-3 with the one pivot and then the two advanced eights and then the wingers high and wide. And there. So when you do have a look at it then and uh, you have a look at Barcelona going into the new season with regards to the players that they have signed and um, their strongest 11 going into the new season. So to Stegen in goals. And then this is where then it becomes um, a bit tricky for Xavi because when you do consider the center backs, so they've signed Christensen, uh, they've signed uh, Kunde, and then they have Arojo as well, and then they've got Garcia, and then they also have PK. But if you were to look at it then as a centre-back pairing, um, you would then most likely have um, Christensen and Kunde as well. And then Arojo would most likely play as a right back because we have seen him playing as a right back. But I honestly think then that um, it's key then that Arojo plays as a centre back because I think that's his best position. But so far, you'd most likely have Arojo, you'd have um, uh, Kunde, you'd have Christensen. And then as the left back, you would have Jordi Alba. But what I would say is I think Balde deserves a chance at left back. And um, yeah. I think that Xavi really needs to trust Balde and um, allow him the opportunity to play because I think this could be um, Barcelona's starting left back given the chance as uh, this is a young player who's shown great potential and he's got great ability and a player that I really, really like. So when you move on then right along, you've got Sergio Busquets. Um, you've got Sergio Busquets and then you would have... Um, you'd have... Uh, uh, Pedri, and then you'd have Frankie de Jong, but you can also have Gavi there, you could have Pedri there, and then you'd have Busquets, so that would be the three, so Busquets, so let's go with Busquets, um, Pedri, Gavi, we'll go with that midfield three, there is Nico as well, Nico, and then there is uh, Frankie de Jong, depending on if he stays or he leaves, but yeah, I think, I think he could potentially leave because it is... It is clear that the club don't want him, you know, and they're trying to push him out. There is Kese as well that they've just signed. But um, for argument's sake, we'll go with Busquets, Pedri, Gavi. And then up front, this is where it gets very interesting. And um, this is what I think takes Barcelona to the next level is this front three. And I say that because when you have a look at um, this front three and um, the amount of, of goals that they have and... Um, the, the, the type of players that they also have within this front three. You know, I think it is a complete front three, you know, and they've got complete players with that regard when you put them together as a collective. You are looking at a front three then that could go on to just smash goal-scoring records within La Liga and also then ensure that they can challenge within UEFA Champions League, especially considering the type of football that they would be playing. So when you have a look at it then, and um, this is today's focus, is the front three, you know, so... With regards to the front three then and um, what Xavi is trying to do. So it's the wingers, high and wide. So with regards to having the, win the wingers high and wide, um, what this does then is that it pins the opposition back four. So that's what you would see. And on top of then pinning the opposition back four, 
This then creates um, opportunities of uh, 1v1 and opportunities for these wingers then to showcase their qualitative skill set with regards to the superiority that they would be looking to offer for this Barcelona side. So off the left hand side, we will go uh, with Dembele. Then we'll go with Lewandowski, and then we'll go with Rafinha. But off the left-hand side, you can also have Fati coming off this side. You could also have Dembele going on that side. As we do know that Dembele then is um, ambipedal, very comfortable with both feet, and he can play off either side. And he has had quite um, the great preseason. He has been scoring goals. He's been very effective. He's been very creative, very skillful. So the three main wingers that I think Xavi will be looking to use this season and rotate them, you've got Rafinha, you've got Dembele, and then you've got Ansu Fati. But we do know that with Ansu Fati and Dembele, they're both injury prone. So it's going to be very key that they can stay fit. And when you do a look at those three wingers, they're very similar with regards to their creativity and their ability then to um, go 1v1 and be able to go past their player and then create an opportunity all three of them have a goal all three of them have a goal but the one distinguishing factor um, between the three of them is that with Dembele he is a lot quicker than um, both Fatih and both Rafinha but otherwise they're very similar players with regards to them looking then to start in that wide pocket of space within um, the wide channel they're looking then to go 1v1 they can beat the men on the outside um, so if this is uh, Dembele, for example, because he is ambipedal, he can go on the outside, he can go on the inside. With Ansu Fati, a lot of the times he's looking to go on the inside as he is right-footed, and then that's when he'd be looking to score those goals. So we'll go with Dembele on this side. On the right-hand side, we'll go with Rafinha. So when you have a look at Rafinha then, also quite similar in that sense. So he is not the quickest of players, but I would say he's deceptively quick because there are times where he does go past and glide past his, his marker as if he's not even there. So he's very, very skillful, left-footed. And whenever then he does look to cut in into that pocket of space, he's well enabled then to bend one into the top corner, bend one into the bottom corner, and he scored quite a couple of goals from that situation. So this is the picture then when you do have a look at um, this Barcelona side with the wingers then staying um, high and wide. This also then um, uh, allows the, um, the two number eights to go as advanced as possible. So at times, it does look somewhat of um, a front five in a sense, you know, and um, the fullbacks then would be key then with regards to looking to progress the ball from those deep pockets of space within those, um, so basically within those half spaces at times within sort of um, those wide spaces as well. But going back then to the front three, then you do have Robert Lewandowski. So this is where the money is for Barcelona. And this is, this is who I think potentially wins them the um, La Liga and wins them the UEFA Champions League going into next season. Because the amount of goals that he scores, you know, and also then when you look at his fitness. So with Robert Lewandowski, over um, the past 11 seasons, he has played 88% of the games he has been involved you know, so this is a player then who averages out of 38 league games a season, he averages 32 league games a season, 32, 33 around there. That's the amount of league games he plays. So this is a player then who isn't injury prone. He takes care of himself and his body and is always, always available, you know, um, unless then if you are arresting him. But this is a player then who's got a clean bill of health with regards then to um, his fitness. And when you do have a look at Robert Lewandowski, this is a player then who can score all types of goals for this Barcelona side. So he can score then with his head. Um, he can be a threat within the box early, you know, um, outside the box, either foot, left foot, right foot. Um, very good then at reading with regards to how then he should make those runs. You know, a player then who can also sort of act as a nine, uh, a box nine or a nine who can then look to pin a center back. His link up play is very good. He adapts to each and every single game very well. So different games require different things. And he is then able to figure out then more or less how then does he outsmart um, the set of center backs that he's playing against. So this is where then I think Barcelona then, if Robert Lewandowski has uh, 
a great season in, in the upcoming season. I think then Barcelona then will win La Liga and they could potentially then look to challenge for UEFA Champions League. And um, yeah, so this is Barcelona, more or less how they would look like going into the new season. So we do know then that there's um, uh, Ferran Torres, um, there's um, Memphis Depay as well within the front three. There's Aubameyang as well, you know, so... There's so many quality players that they have in this front three and uh, players in that could always act as impact players. So when you do have a look at this Barcelona side, they've got so much quality. And I think that Xavi really is onto something with regards to the rebuild for Barcelona. And it's going to be very interesting then to see how this front three does. I think that's where my focus is on, especially with Rafinha coming off that side, Dembele coming off that side. Sometimes they do look to swap. And um, then you would have um, Robert Lewandowski there. So, ladies and gentlemen, do let me know. What do you make of this new look Barcelona? The signings they've made. Um, what do you think uh, Barcelona will be looking to achieve going into the next season? What do you think they can achieve? Do you think they can go on to win La Liga and also compete for UEFA Champions League? Or do you think that this season is still the first season and um, it's still a work in progress and we shouldn't expect much. What do you make of um, Balde as well at left back? Especially considering that, that Jordi Alba then, I would say, with regards to his performances over the past couple of seasons, he has dipped. So I think it's only fair to give Balde the opportunity, especially considering that Balde has um, had very, very impressive performances whenever then he's been given the jersey. So, ladies and gentlemen, do let me know what do you make of this episode where we discussed all things Barcelona. We had a look at the front three and we had a look at their qualities and what Barcelona would be looking to do in the upcoming season. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Liolo. Signing out. <laughs> <laughs>